the more general question, how do, how do we deal with these types of people? And I think there I tend to think that there is some truth in, in the thesis that Thomas Kuhn had about the structure of scientific revolution. Now his, his thesis is the view has always been, um, so somebody formulates a hypothesis and then it is tested and then people become convinced it is false uh, and then that is gradually we march up into, up into the light. And he points out that historically at least that is entirely false. You can have all sorts of falsifying experiences and people still don't give up the idea. And what leads to major breakthroughs is the old generation who clings to their idea regardless of what the empirical evidence shows simply dies out uh, and another generation takes the field and the discipline in their hand. Now this has happened, so to speak, to the Austrians um, because their view was in a way the mainstream view until the mid-30s. Um, I mean, if you take a look at the book like Lionel Robbins' book on uh, uh, the significance, uh, nature and significance of economic science. No, this is a straightforward Misesian book um, and was, was used as, uh, as a main textbook for introduction into the method and methodology of of economics. Um, in the meantime, that is so far removed from what economists do uh, and what has simply happened is uh, not that there was any refutation taking place, just n new people all of a sudden did something else and the other people died out and just a few remnants were left over. Um, so I think the only hope that we have is that Something like that will happen again, and it will be they will be dying out, and we will be the, we will be taking over uh, and, and certain dramatic events can of course maybe help in this um, I mean it has definitely helped the Austrian school uh, first that communism broke apart, and now that we have this huge financial crisis which all the mainstream economists have admitted. We had no idea, we didn't see it coming. Uh, the Chicago economists' rational expectation, people, it seems like that cannot happen uh, because of all the right information are already incorporated in all the, in the stock market prices and so forth. So how can, uh, so it did not happen in their view. So that people are unemployment is just, no, they, they probably just wanted to take a voluntary vacation or something like this. Um, so these events might help us, um, but we also have to be aware of the fact, of course, that, that the Austrian school is a dangerous school. Dangerous in the sense that almost all economists nowadays in the Western world are employed by indirectly or directly state-funded institutions and practically all macroeconomists are dependent on uh, Federal Reserve money and grants and invitations and so forth. With, with the exception of, of a handful of well-known people, uh, all of them are on their payroll. Uh, and even though I'm not a believer in the Marxian idea that uh, das Sein bestimmt das Bewusstsein, the, be the being determines uh, consciousness. Yeah, but it has a little bit to do with it. Uh, if you know where your money is coming from, uh, even if you realize that might not be right, then at least you shut up about that subject and, and uh, study something that does not get you into trouble. So we are up against yeah, uh, a group of people uh, who command almost unlimited funding as compared to what we can offer. But I do not think, I mean, some of, some Austrian uh, economists think what we should do is we should infiltrate the universities <laughs> and then put in, and publish, publish in their journals. Only if we publish in their journals will we ever be taken seriously. I think that it's just, that it's so ridiculous, I mean, so ridiculous. 
uh, none of their articles we would accept in our journals, none of our articles they accept into, uh, into, their, uh, into their journal. We just operate side by side and hope that the circumstances will change in such a way that they will die out and, um, and, we, will, and we will take over. What we have in favor of the Austrians is they can talk to real people. Um, I mean, what we say makes, so to speak, sense. An educated layman can understand what the arguments are. Um, whereas if you have these mainstream economists, I mean, I had many people applying for jobs and then giving a, a speech. Um, you know, at the end, I could not summarize in five sentences what the whole talk was all about. I didn't know. I literally didn't know what what the what the top what the topic was, what the purpose of all of it was, and what the conclusion uh, of all of the, of all of this was. And there are increasing numbers of people who see that these people who just sit there on TV and make comments uh, that they are just bullshitters. It's like, uh, after the stock market fell. Then they say, oh yeah, that was because of profit taking. They didn't know that the day before that there would be the next day profit taking taking place. And how can profit taking be an argument for, because somebody must have bought the stock. So there were obvious, people took profits and the other ones took deliberately losses. Um, none of this, I mean, this, this nonsense we have to listen to from day in and day out and increasingly the reputation of economists is so low. Um, unfortunately, we are affected by this to a certain extent too, because when I tell, tell you I'm an economist, I say, oh, th 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 where should I invest my money? I mean, I, I have not the faintest idea where I should invest my money. But certain things, of course, we do know and these mainstream people do not know. How can it be that an increase in paper can bring about greater prosperity for a society? Now, in plain words, this is what 98% of all economists believe. Um, oh, what is this quantitative easing? It's no, nothing else but belief that additional pieces of paper will cause prosperity to break out. And every, every child in kindergarten understands that that cannot be. But you never hear anyone in these talk shows asking this question. I explain this to me. I, so if I have five, six people a year and, uh, and we have monopoly, monopoly money uh, and I add more to it, how can it be that uh, tomorrow somebody will be richer? Um, no, no explanation for this. So I think the mainstream economics is just um, yeah, hopeless.